this series we're sharing about heroes and hero makers. And today I have with me Austin Prather, who is definitely one of my heroes many times. I have just said, oh, you're my hero. Thank you so much. Um, because he has really served um, not just our church, our teen ministry, our family personally. Um, there have been times when my kids have been locked out for one reason or another, and he's waited with them. He's brought them home, or if we've been um, late to pick them up, he's stepped in and really just been um, a great friend to our family, a uh, friend to my girls, so thank you. I appreciate that. So, Austin, if you could please tell people a little bit about um, your coming to Christ and kind of the first part of your journey and a hero maker that you had. Okay. Is this on? Perfect. Um, so... Some of you guys know me. I've been all around here in the church, but um, I think I started my walk with God, my journey with God back when I was 14, um, which is kind of crazy if you think about how long that is for me now. Um, I will actually have been a disciple as long as I've been, or half my life Mm -hmm. this year, which is weird. But um, I think it's one of those things where it's It started then, but that's kind of the start, and your spiritual walk is a journey, Um, much like the hero maker thing is, is you need people in your life to help kind of identify your need um, and your change, because you don't, it's a starting point, it's not a destination. Um, So I could go through so many different people I've needed in my life, that have been part of my life, changed my life, helped me see myself how as I need to, but for the sake of time, and because I know none of you really want to hear a long story, I'll pick one. Um, and that being said, um, there's, there's one individual that really came out when, that came to mind when Deb and Christian both said, hey, do you want to share? I'm like, oh, no. Um, I guess I can if you need me to. Um, but it was one of those ones where it's the, the, the first story that came to mind was Dave Hooper. Some of you guys know him. He's um, the ministry leader up in the north side of the church. If you guys don't know, we have another campus up north. Um, and I, when I graduated from high school, I came here to Austin, um, went to UT, so hook them, all of you campus students. Rep. All right, good job, guys. Good try. Um, that being said, I, I really came here just with a lot of baggage, with a lot of hurt, with a lot of just uh, not knowing who I wanted to be, not knowing who I was, kind of that, that life story of trying to figure out your life, who you're going to be, what, what makes you you. Um, and that was hard. I, I didn't know what to do. I kind of shut down, at least for probably, honestly, starting my senior year through most of my sophomore year here, and I didn't know who I wanted to be. I really went into a depression um, of trying to just determine who I wanted to be, who I was with God, because I really didn't know. I, I kind of lost who that was. Um, so fast forward a little bit to sophomore year. Freshman year was a bit of a, a rough patch. Um, because uh, I didn't want to engage people. Um, but I, I, I kind of did a reassessment of my spiritual walk with God, of who, who I was, who I wanted to be, who, honestly, God called me to. And I, I had a crisis of faith, of conscience, of just a lot of different things, and I didn't know who to go to. So now back to Hero Maker. The one who really, the, one of the first people I went to was my older brother who's not here, so I'm not going to give any more credit than that. Um, <laughs> uh, otherwise, then it was Dave. Um, and Dave was one of the first people I just went to and poured out my heart. Um, for the first time, really, since I was back in the early years of high school, of just saying, hey, here's me. Um, and I was scared. I went and uh, was on Potbelly on the drag, and um, I kind of went through a whole letter of my life since getting baptized of just kind of how much of a mess I was. And I was just crying. Um, and that was hard, because I'm even tearing up now, which is weird. Um, but uh, <laughs> happens to me every week. I don't like it. Um, I, I'm emotion, deeply emotional, but I don't like expressing it. Um, and again, Dave was one of those people who's not naturally emotional, but helped me. Because to mm-hmm. Christian's point, we need people who are different than us. Mm-hmm. Um, I needed that. Um, but I also need to know that I was okay to feel these things. It was okay to hurt. It was okay to be in a state of depression and try and find God. Yep. And um, Dave was one of those people that just helped um, believe in me when I didn't believe in myself. Mm-hmm. So um, that was kind of cool. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. I appreciate your vulnerability, and I think um, there are times when we all go through depression, but I appreciate your honesty about it, and that when there's a temptation to withdraw, you reached out, and Dave was there for you. I know you said that he believed in you and really helped you um, Mm -hmm. believe in yourself and helped you catch a vision again and a dream. Can you share about that? Yeah, um, that was fun. So, um, as most of you know, uh, I've been in the teen ministry and kind of devoted to that for 
I think it's six and a half years now. Um, but if you go back, I never wanted to be in the teen ministry. That was the hardest time, of, some of the hardest times of my life. It was not a great memory. It was like, I am the biggest mess known to man, especially from those years of my life. And then Teens Dave, are tough. And, and I was that tough teen. Like, you, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Anyways, um, that being said, Dave came up. It was probably my junior year in college and said, hey, what about the teen ministry? Um, and that was not awesome for me at that point because, like, Dave, you just heard all of my life. Um, and I don't want to do this. I don't think I should do this. I'm not worthy of this. But Dave really just believed in me. He was like, you know what? No, you, yeah, you were a mess, but it's time to give back. It's time for you to believe in this and you can do this. Um, I hated it at that time. I still was like, dang, how did I get convinced of this? But I don't regret that at all. Um, that was one of the things that has changed me just because he believed in me in that, both spiritually from the start and then believed that I could do something greater to help others. And that really just connected with my heart. And that's why I spent a good time just really in the teens. I love it. I love them because they're, they're a challenge, but they, they have my heart now. Mm -hmm. They really do. Like I said in the beginning, I'm so personally grateful for how you have given your whole heart to the teens. And really, I think because you went through a challenging time, both as a teen and then in your early years in college, you have a great heart for um, people, men and women, going through that season in life. And you can empathize with them. You're compassionate. You challenge them as well. And you really believe in them because somebody believed in you. Um, so thank you from from our family personally for being there for our teens. And could you maybe share a little bit about what that was like then, going from having a hero to becoming a hero maker and pouring your life into someone else? Sure. Pick a teen. Pick a teen, any teen. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. So again, I'll pick one. Um, it was one of the first teens I invested in was uh, Jordan Pinchard. Um, mm -hmm. He, he was a challenge. He was an uh, introvert times 10 at that stage. Um, uh, but me and him connected because we are, I'm an introvert as well naturally, so me being up here is always fun. Um, <laughs> so it's like, oh, dang it, people talking. Um, but, but Jordan was one of those people that, honestly, one of the best humans, great heart, but just very scared about putting himself out there. Um, and he, he was one of those guys, I was just like, dude, we're going to spend time. We're going to do this. We're gonna, I'm going to make you go lead songs. That was a mistake at that point. Um, <laughs> That's okay, but it helped push him to do things that just weren't comfortable for him. But it wasn't because, like, hey, you need to go do this and suck it up. It was, I'm going to do it with you. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And I pulled him around. I did errands with him. I did, went to his lacrosse games, talked to his coaches, talked to his friends. I did things with him, and we did life together, mm -hmm. kind of like Christian and Deb love to talk about. That's just what life became for me, mm -hmm. was I'm going to do life with him and help him figure out who he was going to be. And um, there's lots of little stories with Jordan, um, but I think one of the things I'm most proud of is a more of an overlying thing of it just got to push him to, you know what, I need you to lead. I need you, people respect you, people look to you, especially in the mm -hmm. team industry at that point because he was junior, senior year. And he really done, hadn't done much for himself, and he would say that himself, but it was like, you know what, I believe in you and I want you to do more. I want you to not feel like you've left anything behind um, or regret anything in this, and it just kind of challenged them on little things like, okay, let's go talk with this person. Let's study the Bible with this person. Let's have a Bible talk and you're going to lead it this time. Or um, just little, little challenges here and there. And he just really eat, ate up the challenges. He kept growing and growing. And um, where he is now is one of those things where it's like, I, I don't take credit because it was all God, but he, he's now married happily. He's now um, helping lead one of the ministries up in Dallas. Yeah. Um, and it, it's one of those things where you're like, holy cow, God's used just a little piece of my life to help him become something greater. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's some of the things I'm most proud about because the team ministry is such a long game. You're not investing for now. You're investing for where they will be. Yep. And I think that's, that's why it's special to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Austin. That's a beautiful example. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Gina, where are you? That's... That's Jordan's mom over there. So, 
I know you're grateful, right? It's so good. It's so good when we have um, role models and hero makers in our kids' lives. We just saw Jordan actually in Dallas a few weeks ago serving he and his wife, serving at the book table, ministering to other people, and I'm really proud of them. And thank you so much for the way that you pour your heart and your experience and your life into others, just like Paul did with Timothy, like Christian shared about today. And um, you've become a hero and a hero maker. We are very grateful for you.